uh, chemical to remove weeds. We now, recently, this is very new, in the last five years there was a huge debate because we use GM food, genetically modified food. Those genetically modified crops, GM crops, they are made to become glyphosate resistant. Glyphosate is the herbicide to kill herbs so that on the big you know, corn field or cotton field you don't see other weeds because they use this a lot. Initially it was found safe and then later on because it's safe, right? Many of these environmental contaminants are having the same pattern. All because it's so safe that we can use it. And then we end up using a lot. A lot mean a lot. A lot mean tons. And then uh, recently there was a conflict in the South. Uh, that was a law case, a suitcase happened last summer. Okay, now it's still, uh, they are accusing that this, they call it Rung Up. Rung Up is the name or commercial name of the glyphosate herbicides. Okay, it's known to cause cancer. So there was a guy that a chemical dryer, Monsanto, is the company developing all those genetically modified food or genetically modified uh, uh, crops because in the U.S. they spray them a lot and then uh, they also found that could cause, could cause, in, Chinese, in, in English, could, or in Chinese, 可以, not necessarily mean that it would definitely cause, but could. So that uh, is the first uh, lawsuit case, uh, now it's still uh, going back and forth, right? In a landmark case last summer, Californian juror uh, found that Monsanto knew it's rung up and these uh, products are dangerous and then they failed to warn the uh, uh, consumers. I was in a shop, actually I ate those uh, uh, oatmeal, you know what's oatmeal, right? Mainly in cereals and the oatmeal is the main source of this glyphosate. Don't ask me why but we are not eating GM uh, 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 cereals. Just that they keep, keep spraying these chemicals around, contaminating the, the, the uh, agriculture lands a lot. And unfortunately, there's a uh, conflict in itself, some different regulatory bodies, including the International uh, Cancer uh, Council and uh, Euro and uh, US government agencies, okay? Because they have a hard time in deciding what those, again, those makes the poison, right? So you better confirm the dose. Now, I don't know which dose is the right dose, but in the toxicity ranking, this is the highest, uh, the most dangerous one. Uh, we are talking about the reference value per day, per kilogram or milligram per kilogram per day, would be around this range. That would be what? 0 0.1 to 1 milligram. Okay, for that recommendation, then I, I actually at home I weigh how many spoonful of the oatmeal that I eat. So I eat only six to seven spoons in order to avoid the limits. But I don't have any data. I mean, I have not even taken the oatmeal for any detection of the chemicals of glyphosate. But that is the uh, uh, good thing about uh, toxicology is that uh, we call this field of research known as regulatory toxicology. Okay, so we need to calculate the reference dose or the uh, observable effects level. Higher than that would have effect. Lower than that, there's no effect. So we call it observable effects level and so on. Or the uh, daily intake, advisable or advised daily intake. So it would be between 0 0.1 to 1 milligram of glyphosate per kilogram. So we all are so concerned with these chemicals. These are pretty new data. I, I went to a, a, a conference in Hawaii this summer, the International Congress of Toxicology. So the two groups of scientists actually could not get any consensus. They know that definitely it would cause cancer, just that the dose sometimes is very hard to determine or confirm. Okay, my uh, recommendation is that if you eat, uh, in, you see the benefit of oatmeal, right? 
it should be good to your heart, it should be good to your blood, your circulation, right? So you have to take the risk. Do we? This is the question I'm posing you. Otherwise, you have nothing to eat. Right? Oh, I don't like, uh, I know many Hong Kong breakfasts, they eat noodles, you know, even worse to me. And then for pets, I, of course, the most famous one is DDT, the, the Thai. DDT is known as a dichrol, diphenyl trichrol ethane with this structure again, two ring, and then three uh, combination, two more at the two sides. It was initially uh, uh, proposed by or promoted by, you know, everybody knows this lady, Rachel Carson. Rachel Carson wrote a book on uh, Silent Spring. A few years later, she passed away. It was so scary that uh, the U.S. government decided to establish U.S. EPA. At the time, they, uh, so worried. they were so worried about the uh, pesticides of contamination, and DDT is just only one of them. DDT is also known to cause what we call biomodification effects from small fish to osprey. Osprey is the yin, those uh, uh, owl or eagle that would eat fish, accumulating into very high level, 10 ppm. And what makes the story even worse is that they found the American eagle. You know what's American eagle? Right? The symbol of freedom also got damaged. The eggshell become thinner. So the uh, chick of the uh, osprey and also American eagle uh, dying. And uh, so later on, uh, we use this to represent what we call organochlorine pesticide, and then uh, because they also damage the wildlife, so we uh, very concerned with this. Uh, they would say, oh, this is very old. Why in KM you still talking about this? Yes, it's old. From uh, recent data of the last 30 years in the US, you can see the concentration or the level dropped significantly around uh, from 100, but you will see it's still higher than 10. Much reduced, but they are still there. Remember, they are persistent. So you could hardly get rid of them. But mostly banned in Europe and in the US. However, DDT is still being used in Southeast Asia, still being used in China, still being used in Africa in order to kill mosquito. Because the benefit, the benefit of using DDT to kill mosquito, we will say, okay, mosquito could be dangerous. Mosquito is also a vector transferring different kinds of uh, pathogens around. So therefore, it's also like dengue fever and so on. So uh, people are still using this a lot, especially in uh, the Big Bay area or in the Pearl River Delta. The old day we call it Pearl River Delta. Nowadays they call it the Big Bay area. I would say that's the same. But then there's a recent data. You can see the DDT level in Hong Kong actually are higher than these countries, India, you know, Uganda. Low, very low in USA, yes, or Belgium or Norway or Finland, they don't use mosquito. That's understandable because that's Scandinavian country, right? They seldom get mosquito attack. Because we are still using them, so therefore the DDT level is still high. DDT is not, DDT is not known as uh, casino. Uh, the, uh, that's the level is quite high. To our surprise, that was uh, 216 data. Of course, after the uh, use of, or the ban, the use of a DDT, we have, uh, what, uh, organochlorine, and then we, did, we call it the first generation of uh, insecticides or pesticides, that we changed to use uh, organophosphate. Organophosphate is to block acetylcholine esterase, so it's known as acetylcholine esterase inhibitor. They use a different mechanism, and because organophosphates are not uh, persistent, because they don't have any coordination, they are just organo with phosphate, so they are rather stable. And later on, the third generation, they are carbamate. There's another chemical like uh, aldecrap. They are also uh, uh, 
acetylcholine esterase inhibitor, also long persistent, and also those from uh, chrysanthemum flower, like a paradoid, also used in a mosquito coil, woman herb, and they could degrade rapidly. And recently, the juvenile hormone analog, as the hormone analog, a chemical, would draw the insect to molt and also to pulpate the mold and also to reproduce. Okay, but because they are so safe, we do use them a lot, a lot and huge amount. And these things do happen. This uh, very patriotic uh, Chinese would like to intoxicate the Japanese. So he put uh, tons of this organophosphate into this uh, Chinese dumpling and sent to Japan. Okay, that was, uh, I guess, only be seen in the BBC news, uh, not available in China, but that's the outcome. Okay, the phosphate and other chemicals now are usually under very stringent detection in everywhere. I think not just in China, but also in, uh, in uh, other Asian countries. We need to take every month of these uh, vegetables or things that for the detection of organophosphate uh, to avoid causing any health effects or toxic effects. Okay. So, uh, number four. You guys still awake, right? Okay. Number four. This is really new. E-waste. We usually, in environmental uh, science, we usually also call it B, W E E E, is known as waste, electrical and electronic equipment. So it's not just from your phone or mobile phone or computer, but also all the electrical equipment. You can see that they were originated perhaps from North America, and then every year there's a new model, and then they buy a new one and dispose of the old one. When they dispose them off, they usually like to put them to China. Africa or South America. This is just only one of the uh, uh, examples that we call it the unfair flow. Now, of course, you may argue why these people would like to dump them because the, the regulation in the U.S. is so strict. So the only thing is that they could remove them and then perhaps other countries may make good use of these uh, what we call electronic used equipments. Okay. However, these uh, chemicals like metals or, or N, brominated compound, they exist in these electronic waste. Brominated compound is added because uh, they would like to use it as a flame retardant or fire retardant. You cannot afford to have your electronic device burn. So you need to add some flame retardants to avoid the burning of your machines or device. Uh, 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 to some point, all these furnitures also consist of this brominated compound. But then after about 10 to 15 years of research, we realized that uh, some brominated compound could be safe. But again, the same old story. I've been working on different kinds of BDE or brominated compound. They are known as brominated uh, diphenyl beta or BDE. And uh, because they are long as safe, so we use them a lot. And then if you use in high dose, it would cause uh, endocrine toxicity, respiration, developmental, and reproductive toxicity. Some even cause DNA damage in lymphocytes. Many people found to have uh, leukemia, perhaps, was due to this reason. So this is the data coming out from uh, this paper showing that these chemicals are running along. So what are ye we? We are waste, electrical, and electronic equipment. Last year, no, 2015, Hong Kong passed a very important bill, the We Control. Uh, in, in Cantonese, we call it Say Din Yellow. Say Din Yellow. What is Say Din Yellow? This is low. The brain, that is a computer, right? Din C is one thing. Say again, learn again, see why. Okay, now there's a company in Hong Kong, if you want to buy a new one, that company would remove the old one for you. And then they have to put it into a special factory to remove this with machines. 
to clean up with all this, uh, to avoid uh, contaminating the environment, one thing, and to avoid these chemicals going into the food chain is another thing. Okay, and of course they would like to recover this very important and precious metal, including lead, mercury, cadmium, and chromium. I was told that in Taiwan they could even recover gold in those uh, in these machines. And then this is the brominate compound I'm referring to, and also the old friend PCBs from the uh, Dawson and Dawson like compound, the polychlorinated biphenyls. Now this chemical, especially BDE, brominated compounds, they interact, or oh, I'll come back to the later, they interact with uh, the thyroid system, oops, sorry. They interact with the thyroid hormone system, like this BDE. The thyroxine is the hormone in our body that we naturally make. The only difference is that this use bromide and this use iodine. You know bromide, iodine, fluoride. They are what? Halogens. Right? So, chemically speaking, they are very similar. Like this given name, 4799123. These are the different chemical structure. And then they don't have this chain here, but however, they would they resemble thyroxine and thyroid hormone in our body. Initial studies have demonstrated that uh, this chemical could affect the brain could reduce the TRH or induces the thyroid tropic releasing hormone and leading to proliferation of thyroid cells. Our thyroid cells would be converted into perhaps tumor or cancer. There are increasing number of incidents. And then when we look back at these leaves of these chemicals, and this is the uh, this is the toxic one on the on the left hand side. Lead, mercury, cadmium, and chromium, and the BDE and PCBs, and including the uh, dioxin and furan. And these chemicals, uh, they would go into the placental. Placental is in our body, in the pregnant women, in our mother. So they would transfer, yes, either through directly through the, uh, through the uh, placenta or from lactation. Same thing is true, the previous slide I showed you the DDT. The DDT is actually measured in breast milk. Okay? In breast milk. So, as I said, we still don't know 100% the clinical outcomes. We are just proposing that there will be risk. Okay, so we are monitoring these chemicals because, as you can see, that BDEs are in the rise increasing the blue dot and then the TEQ of the dioxin and fluorine and PCB they actually dropping significantly. Alright, so these are data, very old data, almost 20 years ago, but we still do I, I don't have a similar slide, uh, maybe I should look up for a, a better slide. But uh, we don't have much data except the paper that I put into 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 the black box. Okay, so uh, yeah, they are found everywhere in the sludge, into the sewage system, into the environment, and into the food, and they would cause problem interfering with our thyroid hormone system. Thyroid hormone is for growth and metabolism, and and if we have gone beyond the growth period, we usually we have problem, especially ladies. They have higher incidence of having a high pole. Thyroidism, meaning that the, the thyroid hormone is not uh, high enough, or in any case for men, very likely to have hyperthyroidism inducing. There would be some gender differences. But uh, a very hot topic on research nowadays is on this area of research. Okay, that's the uh, uh, e waste. Okay. Last group of chemicals. Now, this group of chemicals is actually never considered to be dangerous until recently. Plastic. We see plastic everywhere. Right? We use plastic a lot. We started to ban the use of plastic things, plastic utensils, plastic straws, especially in the food industry. Now, it's a common practice not to use any plastic 
strong. Why are we so concerned with it? Oh, because the plastic is found everywhere. I'll give you one example. This is the blue muscle. Everybody like this, right? I used to uh, be able to eat a lot of oyster and mussel. After I started a project on microplastic pollution, I almost gave up uh, oyster. On average, in Hong Kong, we have around 10 plastic particles in one oyster. So if you enjoy eating 10 oysters, you will probably consume 100 plastic chemicals, I mean plastic particles inside your stomach. I don't know the outcome of it. Uh, many reporters are, no, do you know the outcome? I don't know. Uh, but we are of this uh, major concern because uh, in the water, these are known as what we call filter fitter. They filter the water. They filter lots of water. Liters of water every minute keep filtering because they're filter filter. They filter the water to consume the algae. Of course, they cannot differentiate algae, nutrients, or plastic. And then they end up having all this plastic inside the body. Now there's a common practice that we take these uh, 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 bivalves like mussel or oyster for this step we call it depuration. So you leave this muscle in the tank for four hours or even overnight. That's what now they are doing uh, in uh, La Boxan area and trying to uh, remove the, uh, the uh, plastic. And then what are plastic? We call them micro because they are so small. Small mean less than 5 mm. There are two kinds, primary or secondary. Primary is those plastic from cosmetic product. Remember the old days, we have those micro beads to wash your face. Now they change to use carbon. Okay? And uh, they only change it in the US and Europe. Many of those uh, old products actually are being sold in China and also from Korea being sold in Hong Kong. They are quite popular too. Secondary refers to those uh, plastic worn out. Now, interestingly, plastic is quite durable. We could hardly remove them. So, uh, I still remember in the last couple of years, we found a lot of plastic waste on our beaches in Hong Kong or after a typhoon attack. And then we recovered the plastic. Wow, that's plastic really old. Came from uh, 1970s. You know, the plastic materials are so durable. They are contaminating everywhere. And not just everywhere, everywhere I mean everywhere from the Arctic to the lakes, inland waters, or the Arctic, or the South Pole, even including drinking water. Drinking water. One liter will detect around one to two plastic. One liter. Okay. And then biomass, uh, for example, oyster and mussels, they contain a lot of microplastic. We don't know the exact impact yet. What we know is that because they are plastic, and my mental estrogen is one of the major concerns. So that in Taiwan, they did a lot. Of, in Taiwan, they, they have a very strange culture. No matter what you buy on the street, they give you a plastic bag. They give you a plastic straw. And then you use a plastic bag to, to, to drink. You use a plastic bag to eat everything. Oh, because uh, uh, Taiwan uh, company, uh, they are very famous with this uh, plastic uh, production. So one of the things they're concerned with the low birth rate in Taiwan. Okay, and of course, actually, uh, in 2014, I think uh, 2017 or 8 are more similar. China is still, and is always, the highest consumption of plastic. And this compound is going to pesticide that. Pesticide is a chemical to make plastic more soft, more elastic, so far tight. And these uh, could be dangerous, okay? And then, of course, when they detect the food from uh, mushroom sauce and then from different drinks, all contain these uh, plastic materials. Because the plastic material, even inside a glass bottle or inside a steel can, like a teakwood, they use epoxy to form the inside layer to avoid the can or the bottle become uh, oxidized. Okay, so no matter what they use, uh, they use find a lot of these pesticides. Pesticides and environmental estrogens. Uh, these the problem is that plastic is so difficult to recycle. 
there are at least seven types of plastic high density, low density, uh, 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 here. Okay, polyethylene, PE, HDPE, and also LDPE. We also have PVC and also PET. These are the plastic bottles that we use every day. Or regular polypropylene, uh, they are even more durable. Or polystyrene, uh, one plastic bottle, oh, I don't see any plastic bottle. Yeah. One plastic bottle, at least uh, three different kinds of plastic. The cap, the bottle, and the label. And if you turn the bottom here, you know there's a name of it. This is PET here, number one. There are seven numbers of it. Okay. Now, because they're so convenient to use, they also hurt the environment. Pesticides are or D HP was recognized as safe, but then if more people use them, that we know that they, after metabolism in our body, they could develop into what we call this uh, estrogen mimics. Estrogen is the hormone in female's body. So that's why it's one of the accusations that men would have less sperm, lower sperm count. We're still men, but the sperm count would not be good enough to fertilize an egg. You need a lot of eggs, you know, you need a lot of sperm to swim and search for the eggs to fertilize them. That means the number is not good enough. We could be endangered. And then bisphenol A or BPA is also one of the uh, chemicals inside this plastic. And uh, at one point, uh, many European countries and North American countries, they have already banned the use of uh, Bisphenol A, so now if you buy uh, any uh, uh, polycarbonate bottle, they will say, oh, this is uh, Bisphenol A free. Even uh, wine glass or metal bottle and, or even hospital equipment will contain a lot of this uh, Bisphenol A. Bisphenol A is uh, experimentally confirmed to be uh, an isogenic compound they would induce, like for example, uh, estrogen would have this uh, high, I mean, would be high potency, and then uh, bisphenol A may be 10 times less, but the concentration would be a problem. For the high potency, you only need a little bit of estrogen. You would say, okay, bisphenol A would also cause problem, but the uh, potency is low. However, the concentration that we'll be using will be high. If it's 10 times higher, then they are equal. And perhaps the problem is that it's very hard to determine the TDI value, the total daily allowable intake or daily intake values. And uh, yeah, so the recent review uh, cannot really confirm. So, when we cannot confirm what is the best way to do it, just say no to everything. Okay? The baseline level should be none. So we should avoid using any plastic. That's the you know, golden rule to follow. So I think I have uh, talked enough. In the last slide is on the conclusion. In the conclusion, uh, so I've explained to you many different chemicals from the different groups, trace organic, uh, pesticides, herbicides, and also the uh, what? electronic waste containing different chemicals. And the last group, plastic or pesticides. All these chemicals, we studied them one by one. My uh, last few years of uh, research interest is on this mixture. You say, okay, mixture, if they act on the same receptor, like dioxin and dioxin like compound, including benzoylpyrene and PCB, that's fine. The same receptor, right? So we combine them together to study. We give them a TEQ value. How about two different things? Lead, a metal, and BD. It's just like uh, one guy is hitting you as a boxer and then other guys are kicking your 
feet, then you will have a hard time to handle them. Right? You understand what I'm trying to compare? Mixture effects. Okay? On the list, I also don't have time to deal with is pharmaceuticals. We do uh, have patients around consuming a lot of uh, psychotic drugs and different kinds of drugs, including antibiotics. Okay? And that is also not included, but they are contaminating our water. And then if they enter into the food chain, perhaps we also consume a lot, but we don't have much data to show it yet. Three. Scientific research now, they are focusing on these, what we call transgeneration effects. Transgeneration effects if those chemicals, like the e-waste, going into the mother, and then the mother transfer to the baby. And usually, they would cause epigenetic effects. In the last 10 years, uh, active research in China and also in the US, they study the epigenetic effect. The epigenetic effect is to change the gene expression pattern by modifying the gene promoter through methylation or DNA structural change and so on. And that change could stay on to the next generation. Of course, many of those research are being done using animal models like fish. And then, oh, that's fish. Fish is not human. That shouldn't be a problem. But if fish has problem, I would argue that perhaps human would have the same problem. What kind of problem are we facing? We are seeing more chronic diseases. We are seeing more patients with diabetes. We are seeing more people with uh, intermediate obesity. Of course, it's very difficult to differentiate. Okay, obesity, that's related to fat, right? Fatty acid or fat. And all these chemicals, like uh, trace organics or pesticides, they're also organic compounds. The organic compounds only dissolve in lipids. So if we eat more fat, or if we have more fat in our body, meaning that we have a high chance to have higher contamination or high concentration of those organic chemicals. Okay? There are other circumstantial data, like for example, uh, preterm birth and uh, lower birth rate, like just mentioned the estrogenic effect. Preterm birth is a uh, zhou chan you know, before, before uh, 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 10 months or 40 weeks, the baby came up earlier. There are also other effects like uh, in uh, PWH, they're measuring the diameter of the head of the baby. Okay, there are some data showing that the baby's head are becoming bigger and bigger. Okay, and so uh, with that, I have no further uh, discussion on that, but these uh, five things are active research area that uh, clinicians or uh, scientists in environmental health uh, or public health are working on it. Most of the time they, they like to compare. This, you see the kind of research is difficult to do because you have to look into those uh, human beings consuming different amount of uh, seafood, then you have to do a questionnaire survey to confirm what kind of seafood or meat that they've been eating and then you need to go to the market and in Hong Kong that's very difficult to do research because the market you can find meat from China, from Korea, from Brazil, from US you just don't know how to sample okay so it's not easy to do such research but uh, the uh, uh, <coughs> Center of Food Safety have been uh, conducting some uh, uh, research on this with that, I'll stop here. So, um, I'm not asking you to read all this, I'm just telling you that these are the references I've used to come up with all the information from my slides. Okay? I only put one on the 